In this video, I'm going to show you the perfect content brief. Now, I've worked with content writers for many years on a number of different projects, and everyone complains that content writers are hard to find. And of course, there is some truth in that. But is the problem you and your content brief? What should a content brief look like? What should it be laid out like? Are there tools that can help us create that content brief? Let me show you in this video. I'm going to show you a number of different tools that are amazing to help with your content and the brief in general. So, as I said earlier, many people say, what the hell's going on? You know, we can't really get content writers. The content's shit. It's this, that, the next thing. And of course, as I say, there is an element of truth to that. You do need to find good content writers. However, can we help with our research and with our brief? Yes, we can. And I had this conversation in a, a mastermind that I've got, and uh, you know, I showed people an example of a bad content brief that I created, and I showed them why that was problematic when the content writer was giving me content back. And even the content writer was like, what is this? Uh, and was truly shocked at the content brief that I gave him because it made his job 10 times more difficult. Now, Phrase is a tool that is known to many of us in the digital marketing industry. And I'm going to show you why Phrase is the perfect tool for a content brief. And uh, this was actually a suggestion from Scott G in the group. Um, but Phrase is a tool that many of us have used for years. It's not groundbreaking news, but I want to obviously credit Scott for bringing it to my group's attention. Uh, Phrase is a tool I have used for uh, a number of years and it is still getting better and better. Now, pricing wise, first and foremost, Phrase is relatively cheap and you get a seats, document credits and all that kind of stuff. Now, the biggest thing here with Phrase is if you go to create new content like I have on here. Uh, just let me show you how it all works. First and foremost, um, all documents. So I am just going to create a new document and we will call it uh, SEO Glasgow, just because I'm from Glasgow. So I've already done it in the, the pre-existing one. Now, what Phrase does so that you can understand this is Phrase will process the top 20 Google results for the search query SEO Glasgow. That is what we want to happen. And obviously it's done it for me before. It will show me uh, the word count, the headers, the links, the images, domain authority, and backlinks. And it shows me who those guys are as well. Now, you can have a look at this and start to form your own content brief. Now, it's got an outline, um, so you can uh, select the headings um, by Open Search Explorer, or you can go down again, and you can automate the content brief. Now, you can add different stuff, um, like the guidelines, the people also ask stuff, the SERPs, the topics, the topic clusters, headers, questions, statistics, and even hyperlinks. I'm just going to tick them all. Um, insert that brief into editor, and this creates my content brief. Now, typically, a lot of people are going out to content writers and saying, here's a header, go write 1,200 words about it or whatever. Now, what Phrase does, or what Page Optimizer Pro does, is checks the top 10 or the top 20 in Phrase's um, case search results and it compares that data and gives us an average word count which i think is really important because who says it's 500 words or 800 words or whatever every search term in every niche in different countries is always going to be different so that's important and that is a part of what phrase does is gives us an average word count headers that are based on the top 20 search results, the domain authority based on the top 20 search results, and so on. What it basically gives us here is a, a template. Now, we have target headings, six. We have target word count there. We can put my name in um, for the project owner. We can put a deadline in to the content writer. 
whether that being the 28th of Feb or whatever it might be. And the goal, what is the main goal of this content? Is it to inform people? Is it to sell something? Whatever the, the end goal is from that particular piece of content. Now, obviously a content writer is not likely to be skilled in everything that you throw at them. So giving them the people also ask is ideas for them to put in subheadings and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, should I pay someone to do SEO, blah, 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 blah. Um, now, it obviously gives you the, the, top te uh, the top search results, which is fine. It also gives us the kind of top 20 topics um, and that could be all of these words here, content, website, strategies, agency, consultants, blah, 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 Google Maps. Um, those are all mentioned on those top 20 search results for that term. Topical clusters is something else that you should also be looking at. Um, and those topical clusters are Google My Business Profile or Google Business Profile business expectations, business owners, all of that kind of good stuff. That all forms part of your content brief because your writer will have an idea on the kind of topical clustering aspect um, of what's going on. Um, and there's a whole bunch of these here, talking about search engines, clients, campaigns, companies, business, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Now, it also gives us suggested headers or helps um, the the content writer come up with headers, questions that people ask, such as how long will it take? Um, do we need local SEO? Blah, 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 blah. And something else to make articles more unique is statistics. Everyone loves a statistic. And I think adding those statistics into a lot of your content will help. Obviously, it's working for the other guys, but it's also giving you external links, including Google, Facebook, whatever. Um, so it's giving you, you know, Wikipedia and various other bits and bobs as well. So for me, you're giving your content writer at the push of a button a real good content brief, and it really is as simple and easy as that. Now. On top of that, Phrase can also write the bloody thing for you. Now it's thinking. It's now going to start writing a bit of the content. Now I can get it to write more and more and more and more. Um, do we want to be using uh, AI content? I don't think so. Um, I do think that Google will quite easily be able to detect that. However, um, it can give you a little bit of an idea on what phrase would write and all that kind of stuff. So if you train and give your content writer a bit of training, a bit of advice and whatever else and give them a good solid content brief, then what you get back is going to be massively beneficial. So when you're looking at content briefs, please make sure you do your research. Initially, your keyword research before it, understand what a topical cluster is and then give the writer a solid content brief and based on actual data and not just making it up as you go along and I have also been guilty of that um, in the past just saying to people go write a thousand words go write a thousand words it's not the right thing to be doing so that is the perfect way to lay out a content brief for a content writer giving them data information and stuff they can work with rather than them having to go and do all of this research and pull stats together and all of that stuff. So Phrase is super solid at that. Not suggesting you have to use Phrase. You can go and pull this together yourself, use a number of other tools to do this, whatever works best for you. But this is what a content brief should look like and hopefully result in you getting better content at the end of the day. <music>